Uncle. Jimmy VP. First guest us. on our podcast. Unreal, bro. Unreal yeah. conversation. This was a fun one. I, you know, starting out as an actor, if I would have heard this advice that he so graciously blessed us with, I would have saved myself years, you know, of just nerves and, and everything that every actor starting out and actors who are in their career goes through. He's got some of the best insight and perspective on acting that I've heard. That's true. I mean, we didn't really get that much into like the business and what, you know, you have to do to, you know, get your foot in the door necessarily or anything. We, we really, it's fun just hearing his stories and my family's stories and just what kind of inspired him and what he recommends and what were some influential things to him and what we kind of all found uh, influences from other like successful people. And, and, and he talked a lot about like what it's like to last as a performer and like, you know, still be inspired and everything. It was, and it's fun for me always to hear from like through the eyes of sort of an outsider. Like when I, when someone like you interviews him, like gives him questions, it's fun for him to like actually have to be on best behavior and really answer the question. <laughs> this his nephew, like, you know, always like talking about that stuff. Yeah. What some of the best, my biggest takeaway from this conversation was the fact that you need to stay consistent. And even in, uh, you know, this industry of peaks and valleys, when things aren't coming to you, you got to make things happen and you got to stay on it. And the reason people are nervous and they put so much importance on this one thing is because they're not in practice and they're not in the flow of the actual craft. And also, he said, you know, just like a chef and, and, you know, any other career, just trying to get better and better and better. And that's really what it's about. Yeah. 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 And like love and life, obviously it's not too difficult to see where I get that from sort of like having passion outside of that. He said his dad was kind of more of a model. He would say than he was for auditioning as far as he always got super nervous, which is totally great. But uh, his dad would stop thinking about it the second he'd walk out the door. Like he was like, "Yeah, oh, yeah, you know, we're I gotta get to tennis now." Yeah. So <laughs> hey, those are some of our biggest takeaways. Amazing conversation. If you're an actor, or you're a director, or writer, anyone in this business, you definitely want to hear this one. This is Jimmy Van Patten. Enjoy. So I forgot to listen. Yep. Uncle, Yo, Jimmy. let's let's set this up first. Uh, can you give us a quick intro on your uncle? Duke, and then we'll actually set the context for this whole thing and why he's our first guest. Yeah, you and I will do that after, but real quick, it's it's fun to have for our first guest, our, our podcast, Jimmy. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it at all. I don't think any of my family's actually listened to it yet. I'm looking forward to getting familiar with it. <laughs> well, now after that you're on it. Not yet. Now that you're on it, yeah. But it's, all right, so it's Hollywood Beginnings. Jacob and I, have been doing this for probably what six months now yeah like what? 30 weeks you're kidding <laughs> yeah it's I been never heard about it. i never heard that he was doing this and i talked to him every day well, now I we're was... gonna get the numbers strange now because you're on we're gonna get some viewership <laughs> yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good luck with that right <laughs> <laughs> yeah he has been in this business he knows it's tough um <laughs> no so we've been doing this for a bit and we, we started it because we thought that, hey, we, Jacob's a director. I'm an actor, writer. You know, I consider myself a creative entrepreneur. And we've been doing it probably for like six years now, six, maybe seven, almost, if I want to age myself a little bit. Probably, uh, we used to say five. And we feel like we're at points now, and we're both doers, where if someone was just starting out, coming out of college or just coming to Hollywood or whatever, it would be invaluable to hear what we do week to week. And these are the stories that no one hears on Howard Stern. You might get like a glimpse into some, like a couple lines about someone's beginnings, but that's the stuff that has always fascinated me the most. And same with Duke. And that's the kind of stuff that people need to hear because right. when you think of Leo DiCaprio, you think of him in his current form. You aren't thinking of him at age 12 going on the year of auditions, not landing anything because he's trying that's to be like true. everyone else. So these are the stories that artists, aspiring artists, people who are interested in, you know, coming into this industry would be most interested in. And I think they could really learn from it. Yeah, there's in fact, and especially me, sorry, not to go on this for too long, but especially like five years ago when I, you know, I was living at Patton Place 
and stuff. I could, I was psyched out of acting and stuff. I had had some bad acting classes at first. I couldn't find any actors that were like in their, you know, mid, late twenties that were auditioning a lot. that were doing comedy that were making their own movies that were, had good representation and were really kind of in the business and stuff. I couldn't find people that really had real know-how and stuff. Because you're and, surfing all the time. You're surfing too much. <laughs> well, actually, that's not Fair. bad for keeping your <laughs> your like morale up too, which we talk about as well. It's like right. you and it's healthy and you're strong, well rounded. Right. Yeah, you got to be well rounded. Professional surfer. It's amazing. Really, very thank impressed you, with that. Thank you. But uh, no, no, and we want to talk about all that with you, like how you okay. navigate the lows, how you still have a passion to make movies, how to make comedy, how to you know to watch movies, not be too jaded. You hear so many film people that after years and years they're like i don't even like watching movies because it's like uh lifting up the curtain and you already know too much about how to make it so you're disenchanted and stuff which is understandable in ways but i i've always said about my dad about you my mom everyone that for you guys to have such zest curiosity still and stuff it's very inspiring i don't know if i'll have it i'm gonna always try to have it but i think it's a practice and stuff so anyway we thought it'd be fun i've also never really asked you certain questions on this stuff to get to the bottom of it. I, I, I ask a lot, but so this would, I think this would be great. Okay, great. Bring yeah, it on. I mean, the biggest, the, I yeah. would love to just kick things off with hearing about you at the very start and what Duke just brought up as far as like the zest and being motivated about this and staying motivated about this. It's an industry where there's all these highs and crashing lows and just how, mental wise did you start and then getting to your first break and how did you just kind of stick in there and stick what, it out what hooked you what inspired you you must have gotten great yeah, advice about first. early years okay i'll start from the beginning uh duke's father is vince vincent van patten uh my brother and i have we have another brother nels the three of us were born with Dick Van Patten and Pat Van Patten. She was, a, my mother's a dancer. My father was an actor since he was a child, child actor. And he became a huge Broadway star uh, in his younger years. And that's back when Broadway was big. It was the big thing when plays were big, not musicals, but plays were gigantic. It's a big thing to be a uh, working actor, you know, in, on Broadway, li literally on Broadway. He did 27 shows on Broadway. So we, we came from that. We're in New York. My father told us all the stories about how his mother brought him around New York with his sister and just pushed them, pushed them because the, his father left and it was a very rare back then, but they had a divorce and just left and left them. And the mother needed to get support and she, she wanted the kids to be actors to support her. And my father was just a, a good son. He just did whatever she told him to do. And she brought him door to door in New York to all the auditions. And he was very great as an actor. He's just natural, great actor. And he learned so much from working with the best actors in the world. You know, the, uh, the Luntz, uh, Lynn Alfred. Fontaine, yeah, Alfred Luntz and Lynn Fontaine. Uh, uh, he's even in their book. They wrote a book and saying he's the best juvenile actor we've ever worked with. And uh, it was terrific working with him. And, Whatever, but he learned so much from working with the greats, you know, Henry Fonda, with, uh, you, you name it. It just goes on and on and on, the great actors. And, and then they invented television. Um, mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the New York actors were doing live television. They didn't have tape yet. So my dad was, you know, a very popular actor in his younger years, up until he was about 25, 26. And then he started losing his hair. And he became more of a character actor, and he had a family. He, he married my mother, uh, Patty Poole, uh, a dancer on the Jackie Gleason show. She went as far as you can go in dancing. She was, it was the creme of the crop. They were the, 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 the June Taylor dancers were the biggest dancers. Uh, you, you know, she, was, she was also a professional you know, as a child because uh, they were both uh, in professional children's school right off of Broadway. It's still there, actually. Uh, and they were in the same class together in the eighth grade. Okay, so that's just giving you the beginning of this acting clan, because this acting clan became a very big family of actors and directors and writers and producers. Mm -hmm. So um, that said, my dad wasn't working as much, but he's doing character roles once in a while in movies. And 
the agent said one day, we're living in New York. I was about uh, uh, 11. And the agent says, these kids are great. What, what, do they want to act? And we went, yeah, yeah, we want to act. We want to act. And Vincent and I said, we want to act. And Nell's like, I want to play baseball. You know. So the two of us wanted to do it. How did the agents even know you? Did, were they just around? Just seeing us. The agent came over the house and saw yeah. us. And said, these kids should be doing commercials and acting. And, uh, and so we wanted to do it. And I'll never forget my first experience. It was really bad. I went to this, uh, this, this audition with my brother Vince. And they saw both of us for the same part. And he was a, he was a blonde haired, happy kid. He had the, he was very cheerful and very energetic and happy. And I was a little, back then I was like more of a sad sack. You know, my eyes always looked sort of sad and I was sort of a dreamy kid, a little out of it. Um, they said that I was sick a lot, you know? So I think <laughs> I didn't have that pep that little kids had to have to get, you know, in a commercial. Right. My first experience as an actor, uh, as an audition, auditioning for an actor was a Susie Homemaker. It was a toy for girls, little girls. And they had this song. It was very popular if you watched, you know, kids shows. It went Susie Homemaker, Susie Homemaker, do you have a stove that heats? And they had this stupid song. And the kids sing it. You know, they're all happy and, and they tell us before, you have to be very happy and cheerful. You, you love the stove and you're just dancing and happy. And so we started singing the song, and I was like, Susie Homemaker, Susie Homemaker. I thought I was being happy, but I sure. looked like a sad, sad kid. Vince was like, Susie Homemaker, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make him laugh, make him laugh, make him laugh. Okay, laugh. thank you. And we walked outside, and then they came, the woman comes outside and says, okay, now your son Vincent was terrific, so we're going to use him. Now, right in front of me. <laughs> right in front of me. At 11. Well, he's, 11. A little, he's a little awesome. sad looking, and uh, you know, we, he's, he's not going to work for this type of thing, so and I'm, all of a sudden, I, I'm, I'm so heartbroken. Like, <laughs> it's the worst thing I've ever heard. I'm like, I started crying. Yeah. And I'll never forget that. It was the worst feeling in the world. That's why I've hated yeah. auditions ever since. Yeah. <laughs> nothing worse than auditions. There's nothing worse than an audition. Well, However, it's some people are great that... at auditions. I was always great at the part when I got the part. Yeah. Yep. I, you know, I, I was just never good at... Uh, the, you know, I used to get very nervous and, you know, forget it's the line. It's such a separate like process. Yeah. I really don't feel like it's the best way to gauge someone's yeah. talent. May, or may I say for a role? Yeah, but but nowadays, nowadays yeah. because of COVID, now that now that everyone's taping yeah. their auditions, yeah, man, I would have killed it back then. Mm -hmm. I mean, just taping, I'm good at. I that I'm good at. I'm great at doing the scene, but not in front of people when they're saying okay, and you're yeah. holding the script and your hands. You're so nervous. Even when I was like in my twenties, yeah, thirties, I'm holding the script and my hands are shaking because you're so totally. nervous. You, should, you get nervous. Thing. Actors get nervous. Most actors get very nervous because we're, you know, sensitive people and all that. Yeah. That's how that started. And they're uh, judging you too. Like, like you're the, you're the brand, you're the product, you're the thing that's being put up there. So it's incredibly hard to separate yourself from, cause it is you. All right. You're Before I forget this guys, I, there's more to this auditioning stuff, but I want to hear Jimmy. So those are commercials. Those are little times. What was the first experience you had? Because I assume you weren't like a theater kid necessarily. And we know you as a big personality and stuff now, obviously. But what was your first experience where you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm really storytelling. This is great. I'm entertaining the audience or I'm, I'm getting to know this character. This is different. And then you ultimately I've seen stuff when you were a teenager where you, you would steal every scene you're in. No, that's easy. It's easy. As soon as I got my first real job. We moved to, okay, my father- and Why'd got, you stick with it when you didn't have that experience? My father was doing, no, I didn't have, yet. I didn't get anything. I got nothing. So we, we moved to California a couple but of years But why would ago. you even try if you weren't hooked? Like it-, it I first, wanted I was, to do it. The agent sent me out and it was hard. So we moved to New York. The agent comes out here with us because she was a small agent and she was very good. Dickie was her bigger, and, biggest and client, Dickie, right? Dickie. Yeah, she came out here because my father came out here and it's because he got a Broadway play that came to California. So we all came oh. here and Little Miss Sunshine. All of a sudden, I get an audition to play a New York kid, a reform school kid, something I'm actually right for. Like, like I look like a little dark haired reform school kid. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and read for Gary Marshall wow. for The Odd Couple, which was the number one show on television in front yeah. of an audience, you know, a comedy. Who and are I the two? There, I start doing the lines and they're all laughing. All of a sudden, they're all laughing. They couldn't find a neat little New York kid, I guess, you know, it was like, I was like, you know, Scott Bayo, you know, yeah. and I got the job and all of a sudden when I got out there in front of the audience, it just came out of me. I it came out of my shell. I was, 
It was my first job. And it's that, in front that, of an that, entire that, audience, that, right? It was a sound stage. It was a multi-cam. That's how they, was, they, they used to call it three camera shows. You know, was, they have the ad laughing to it, but there's a real audience out there laughing. You know, so the, odd couples, just look at the odd couples. It's one of the best shows ever on television. Who are the two giant leads again? They're the biggest of all time. Jack yeah. Klugman and Tony Randall. Oh. Yes, you, know, you guys are so young. You're out of it. They're the <laughs> best. Couple, oh. they're out, you're, just look at, just Google everything. <laughs> we know how we know how big the odd couple is. Obviously, every reference has been made to like, oh, you're the odd couple. When a show was big back then, it was gigantic because you had three networks. Right. And if you were on a network show and it was number one, you're you guaranteed were like a, millions. You're like of the biggest. Years. You can't go anywhere in the world. Everyone knows you on the planet Earth. And yeah. there's an adrenaline rush that. that comes with just a live audience being there too. You're getting the best of both worlds. You're yeah. Getting the film, you're getting the audience, all that stuff. Yeah. As a yeah. kid, I can't even imagine. So yeah, it was great. So you I, have that. I'm alive. I just all of a sudden, I, I, I'm an actor. I felt yeah. my first job. It was great. Exciting. And then I started booking all those shows, you know, right. one after another, you know, Westerns, didn't matter what it was. I went in there and got it. And are you but, having one? But I still was nervous. I'm you're nervous. But when you get the job, it's okay. It's just, you're only nervous when you're trying to get the job. Just I think people should remember that. It's, it's harder to get yeah. the job than it is to be good when you're there on the set. I had one time, I was, uh, this is back to you, Jimmy. One time I did like a casting workshop. I got in front of a big casting director and I, I did the audition or I did the monologue that I was supposed to do. And it was pretty dang good. I was like very shocked with myself. I was like, wow, I was, I was just, I was just in it and I was able to work with the director that directed me. And I, you know, I really put my heart into every little thing he said. And there was someone who seemed so confident and like he was going to crush it and stuff before he went up and pretty much in front of the casting director, everyone was good. I was like blown away. Everyone was real and directable and solid as they should have been. But there was one person who I thought was like a stud and he is, I, I know him since, but at that, at that interview, he just completely choked and he couldn't even get the words out and to me that actually humbly that showed me i was like oh my gosh so that's just a very human thing that happens to everyone yeah. and then number two i was like i kind of feel really bad for that person because he left immediately after he got up in front of everyone yeah. long story long <laughs> uh, i uh I'm out at dinner with you and my family the next day. And I was kind of like gloating and like feeling good about myself. I was like, you know, I guess I, uh, I guess I am really ready to like go for these big auditions and stuff. It, this was like a couple of years ago. And uh, I'm like, I guess I needed to see other people choke and me do well to realize that. And you're, and you know, it was nice. I see the person that choked across the restaurant. They were at the same restaurant as us that night. It was like fate. And I Amazing. thought to myself, my yeah. first thought, my first thought was, Oh, I, I deserve to see that to make myself feel better. I was like, you should be proud, Duke, that you did good. But my second thought was, now nah, you know what? Do something nice for someone else for a second. Go up to that person and tell them the reality that they're too deep in the rabbit hole to realize, which is that what happened to them happens to everyone. And you literally told me that. I think I told you the situation right before, and you said, no, that's true. You, you told me, you're like, that's true. The biggest comedians, the biggest, most personable people in the world freak out at auditions and can't even get the word they won't yeah. audition and so i literally went up to him and told him that and and he literally texted me afterwards he said i was literally thinking about like you know i, I don't know what my future was and stuff and you like <laughs> saved me by telling me that and yeah. and i i just to this day i my dad was just talking about nerves the other day and i i had to remind him you it's just fun to have good smart people around you to like help you realize nerves aren't bad they're annoying because before you're waiting an hour or a whole day before where you're like all nervous and you're right. like oh geez is this is even worth it this is like i hate being nervous all day but you just got to swim to the end it's just like the same self-help practice it's like nerves aren't bad it means you care and usually after you do one take anyway you're you got the nerves out and now you're down to really get into the nitty-gritty and get real and stuff so my Listen, point is stop making it's just like it. anything the more you it's just like anything else the more you're doing it of course, the easier it's going to get and the better you're going to be. And if you're not working, you're not studying, you're not, you know, you're not active, uh, and then you get back into it, it's a little tough in the beginning. But let's just say you get a TV series. Maybe you're nervous the first day. All of a sudden, everyone's your friend, and it's very easy to come to a set and go, oh, I made a mistake. Let's do it again. But when you come to someone else's set, you get a guest appearance, you don't know anyone, 
very nerve wracking to come onto a you know a new show yeah. with your lines and you th- think thinking yourself if I if I mess up one of these lines everyone's gonna look at me like I'm like like uh, I'm, I'm no good. All these thoughts go through your head. Yeah, but the right. point is, the more you do something, the less you're gonna have to worry about that. It's just like if you're doing a play, a play like uh, you know opening night is is you know very nerve wracking. But then once you get into it, you're like being creative and you're not even thinking about you know, nervous anymore. You're, you're, you're having a conversation before you even walk out there about something else and boom, then you're right out, right out there in front of everybody and <laughs> become alive again. You know, it's, it's really an exciting uh, job actually, uh, to, to be honest. I think uh, performing is really exciting. I, I may have been born into it in the sense that, you know, my dad was doing it and we wanted to do what he was doing. And then his kids wanted to do it. Uh, uh, our kids, your, you, and it goes on. And now we have cousins and uh, <laughs> that are in the business and we have an uncle and aunt growing. and my aunt Joyce. And there's so many Van Pattens now and they're all in the business and they're all doing well and they're all good in my opinion. They're all doing great jobs. It's, it's pretty exciting. I'm a Syracuse alum. I went to acting school. That's what I originally wanted to do. Um, and they sometimes have current students that come out to LA for the semester. It's like their version of an abroad thing. And so uh, a couple months ago, I was on this panel and one of the questions from one of these newer actors was, um, you know, what if I get on a set? I'm all I'm new to this. I'm worried about like, you know, what, where do I stand? Like, what do I do? Like what? And I let them know from the director's point of view, a lot of the times I'm not even thinking about any of that shit. For me, it just comes down to like shots at the end of the day. And yeah. so a lot of it is exactly what you said about that consistency, about just continuing to do the thing. Because if you're out of practice, if you're not doing it much, you're going to put all this like unnecessary importance on this one single thing. And that's going to really screw with you. Exactly. Exactly. But so just stay busy. Keep doing it. Um, yep. That's the uh, that's my advice. Uh, the old timers, all the great actors, uh, Spencer Tracy, they said, what's the secret to you know being good? And he would say... Uh, you know, just show up on time and know your lines and hit your marks. And it's funny because a lot of people are not that good at those things anymore. I mean, I've, I've noticed is we're making films ourselves. Yep. You get younger actors and they're coming on sets and they don't really know about hitting their marks that, you know, and they're sort of like, in, as an actor, if, if I'm acting with them, I'm not going to tell them as an actor, I'm going to say, hey, you should. Do. But it's like kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's not, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a, unprofessional unprofessional but they don't know it um and and if they have a director that knows the director will tell them but you know you should really you know first of all i mean the only way of really learning all that stuff is just by working so you you gotta just get the job just working getting the job and then all that'll come (laughs) you know yeah yeah yeah. It, no, and if you're doing TV, like obviously Michael Douglas started in TV, that San Francisco TV show, a lot of big movie stars. It's like if you're doing TV, if you're doing a soap opera, if you're doing plays, obviously in New York or England or something, you're you're doing it a lot. <clears throat> and right. you're working a lot of times with you know veterans who can pass down stuff, and that's how you really learn. That's right. Uh, my dad always said that. He always said, uh, "I said, oh, I'm going to this great class, Peggy Fury in Hollywood." He goes, don't you, what, what are you wasting your time going to class? He goes, just get a, just work. He goes, when you yeah. work, that's when you learn everything. Because the only way to learn acting is working. And he's not the only one that said it. A lot of actors say that, you know. And, and, and Duke now, and I talk a lot of the time about acting schools and, and how helpful or not helpful they actually are. At the end of the day, you see some of these actors, they start out as kid actors, they're here in LA. You know, there's a lot that can be said about like kid actors and how it can kind of mess you up. But yeah. um, as far as the craft part of it goes, it's like they know exactly what they're doing and they're nine times out of 10 so much more realistic and just natural and better actors than the people coming out of acting school. Yeah, I think I, I think it's because they don't have someone telling them what, what to do every time they're doing something. Right. You're a little more free on a set. They, they kind of say, okay, let's see how you're going to do the scene. And you do it and they go cut and they, they were happy with it. And if they're happy with it, if they say cut and you don't have to do it again, then you've done a good job. If the director's happy with you, in acting school, they're, <laughs> they're yeah. torturing you a, a yeah. lot of the times. You know, a lot of the times they're, yeah. they're saying you didn't feel it, or you need to do this, or you need to do that. And always, some people just go a little crazy in acting schools. Actually, some people it's, can't take it. It's a little too ethereal. I finally found that good acting school, and Jimmy knows all about. It. I was in it for two years, where it was all about the writing. It became much less about like 
oh, what you're personally working on. It became more about bringing this vision to life in the best possible way, whether it's one line in a comedy, whether it's a horror film, whether it's anything. And then we just would practice a lot. We would just actually try different stuff. You would try saying a line comedically. You try saying a line with a personalizing it. You would use all these different tools and then and you take little stuff. And the point was there was not that much of an emphasis on you have to do it with the technique or this or that because you get on set and I just did that Lifetime movie and I have an action scene and I have to like do a choreographed little fight with the guy or whatever and call him out and he's got to hold me up. You don't have time to think about a freaking technique. You're just literally, you're trying to figure out how can I make this the realist? How can I mesh up really like be with my scene partner, be professional, but also bring this story to life. Also remember the technical stuff, what the director is telling me. And honestly, at the end of the day, you want to have fun. Even if it's the saddest scene, even if it's this or that, you still are having fun when you feel like you're nailing it. Yeah, well, I think there's, I mean, there's no, there's no correct technique, but whatever works for you, it's like, whatever works for you. If there's, if a tech technique works for you, then you stick with that, you know, and you don't ask other actors, Hey, what's your tech, you know, they're just doing what works for them. So they come off. How they're supposed it all, to come it all matters what comes off on the screen. Yep. That's all yep. that matters. Yep. doesn't matter what you're thinking, you know? Uh, I had one time, I had one time, uh, I, I was working with a scene partner on something and I, I said it and I just instantly said it so well, the, the, the back and forth. And I was like, wait, how did I just do that? I, and this was when I was like super psyched out of acting like five years ago. I was like, I, I didn't even use any technique or anything. I was that naive. I'm like, I didn't uh -huh. use a technique. And he's like, dude, what are you talking about? You, you just did it. You don't need a technique. Like you, you already have it. And I was like, Oh wait. And I, I realized I was like, okay path of least resistance like do you think in sketch comedy do you think it's saturday night live or or uh you know some of the best bill Hader? do you think bill Hader's worrying about every time what technique he's doing or michael kane or anything they're worried about bringing they have a lot to think about but they're thinking about the material they're thinking yeah. about okay yeah. i'm playing this serial killer jeffrey dahmer and i'm worried about running away from this cop and he knows my secret and i uh i i'm trying to meet up with this person and fake this thing later now I try to get into the mind of the scene. It's role playing. It's just role playing. And then, and then sometimes that doesn't work and you realize, okay, now I have to, you know, uh, channel this from a movie I saw or channel this from real life. How do serial killers really act? What do they try not to do? Are people when they're crying, trying not to cry that whole thing. So my point is yeah, crying, is a, crying is a good one because uh, crying people have different ways of doing it. Some people really cry. Some people are really good at really crying, you know, and some people don't cry in life. So they had to figure out how is it gonna look very real for them to cry. And totally. they could be better than the people that can actually cry. What? They can fake it better than the people that can actually cry because- Same with freaking out. They, they, they're thinking of how am I gonna make this look like I'm really crying and they do it. Uh, they add some stuff, you know, some mineral oil, whatever they use. And it looks like they're crying, but you know, they make their eyes red, mm -hmm. squeeze it, whatever you have to do for it to, for to tell the story, to be to look as truthful as possible. That's that's yeah. it, right? right. And Jimmy, you, yeah, you learn that from experience. Sorry, this is a business of peaks and valleys, and so I'm wondering if you have any advice for actors who are getting in the business, or maybe they've been in the business and things aren't coming to them in the present. Yeah, do you have any advice as far as staying sure. ready and being consistent? Yes. It's a business that's going to be like that, no matter who you are. It's gonna, it's going to be like that. So you have to be prepared for that, and you have to, uh, you have to also realize when you are working and when things are going great and everyone's telling you how great you are, not to really believe it 100. percent You have to just say, "I'm an actor, and that's what I do," because those people are the ones that really lose it when they when they find out that they're not famous anymore and no one cares anymore no one knows who they are anymore they believed it and it's it's human nature to believe it because everywhere they go yeah. people say you're the greatest you are you're unbelievable i love you everywhere they go you're the oh my oh you're the greatest and they're so <laughs> they're still like, yeah they start going yes i am the, they start thinking to themselves i am the greatest and they're the ones that really fall hard when their series is done and they never work again and the but, reverse is you have to be in the reverse time. the reverse is you just have to know that that's that's the way the business is and if you like to act then just keep acting you know do something um 
until you get another job and try to make a living out of it. If you can't make a living out of it, that's understandable. It's not that it's really, it's difficult to make a living at it, but if you stick with it, persistence, and you're good, you're going to, you're going to work and you're going to make a living at it. That's, that's really the truth. Do you think an actor should learn how to write and direct, or do you feel like you can just be purely an no, actor? Just an actor. I, I, if, if you're not driven to write, you should just act, you know, if you're not driven to, to direct. Well, a lot of actors say, I want to direct, you know, um, but not every actor wants to direct. They just want to act, you know, and uh, an actor is an actor in my mind, you know, uh, actors you make great. I think actors make great directors. Uh, you know, there's two different types. There's, there's ones that come from the camera of the editing room. Right. There's, right. there's, there's uh, actor, uh, actor directors. And I think that there's a lot of great actor directors. So they get it. If they want to do it, they should definitely pursue that. Yeah, I think so. It's funny but, though. You you don't label yourself as a writer, I don't think, or director. Even though I but, am a writer. And but you like, that's that's what I was about to say, is that- because I consider myself an actor first and I just don't go around, I'm a director, I'm a writer. You know, I don't, no, yeah. I'm an actor. I just happen to write a few things here and there. Or a musician, you are you are a musician too. I mean, you're yeah, and that's the guy not what that I'm, likes yeah, life. You I'm do an actor, life. I'm an actor. And that's it, I was born an actor, that's what I am. Duke is constantly yeah. talking to me about keeping the balance of life and having a 360 life where it's like, yeah, you're in the business and you're really passionate about that and everything. That's something that I can always learn to do more of as far as having other hobbies and hanging out with people, all that kind of stuff. Can you speak on the importance of that? Absolutely. I learned that. Another thing from my dad, I learned, we learned everything from our father because, you know, he, he lived it. Uh, he played tennis every day. If he wasn't working, he'd be playing tennis or he'd go to the racetrack and bet on horses. And, uh, he, uh, yeah, you have to have hobbies. I, I think there's a lot of actors that don't. I think my dad's sister doesn't really have that many hobbies. Yeah. He likes to, she's a Broadway actress, a very well-known Broadway, Broadway actress, Joyce Van Patten. Mm -hmm. She, um, I don't think she has that many hobbies except for reading and uh, books and studying. And she takes herself very serious as an actress, but yeah, I think, it's, I, think, I, think, I think it's really healthy to have, you know, things to do when you're not acting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Things that you like are passionate about other than acting and all, anything you do, by the way, here's what I've learned. And this is very, very interesting because it's so true. I've never, I've done so many things that people say, oh, he's just wasting his time learning how to juggle. Oh, he's just wasting his time learning how to surf. Oh, he's wasting his time learning how to play tennis. Oh, he's wasting his time. You know, it's not true. Everything that you learn, everything you will wind up using in acting. Mm. I've gotten all these jobs because I could ride a horse. I've gotten all these jobs because I could play tennis and I could roller skate. So I got a big movie. Uh, it's called Roller Boogie. I, I could ride horses. So I got all these Westerns. I, I got, uh, I, I could do, I could, I learned how to do stunt fighting. And so I got jobs just because they said, oh, we're doing an action movie. We need actors can, that are handy. Yeah. They call that handy. But guys, I, real quick, point made. I'm so sorry. We have less than a minute left. Yeah, we got 40 seconds. I, however, I, I would, I would like to do more. We don't. We don't have to. If you guys don't want, I. I think we have even more to go into. If you guys were up for it, Jacob. Any. You guys can poo poo this, but do you want to send another link and we go fifteen more minutes, or what do you guys think, honestly? I'm down. How do you feel? Okay. Hold yeah, on. Second. Fifteen more minutes feels perfect. I think this was a little too tight. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob, do you mind setting? No, not at all. Perfect. Okay. Sure. sure. I, I. 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 I would love to talk to you guys for 15 awesome. minutes. All right, we'll hop right back. So my question, my next question for you, Jimmy, is, <laughs> is there a role that you have not been able to do yet? Or is there a certain type of role that you want to tailor the later part of your career towards? And are there any strategies that you feel like you could use to get closer to that goal? Or is it more about whatever roles come, just kind of let's, you know, keep figuring it out? Yeah, to be honest, it really is about whatever the pinball goes, you know, you do. I, I was taught from my dad, so it was so old school. Old school was an actor just does any job he gets. You, 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 get, you get hired for something, you take the job. You don't turn it down. Mm -hmm. You don't say, this job's not right for me. I can't play that kind of part. I only want to play these kind of parts. Uh, I want to play this kind. Yeah, we, uh, old school is an actor acts. You go up, you read for it, you get it, you do it. That's, and I, I still go by that, you know, and I just, uh, 
Now, when it comes to writing our own projects, uh, that's where we say, I want to do this kind of a role. We, let's, I could play that part. Let's make it like this. And that's the fun. That's when it really becomes fun. But as an actor, yeah, I mean, my whole life, it just sort of just bounced around. And it's so funny because the jobs that you don't think you're right for, the jobs that you don't want to do, you know, it's too many lines. I'm not going to learn all those lines. I'm not, it's, uh, I can't play that kind of person. They wind up being, the challenging ones wind up being the best jobs you ever did. They wind up becoming the best. I put, a, I put on it's a so weird. The ones you don't want to do. That's why it's it's too bad right. people turn things down because they don't realize right. that if the tough ones are the ones that really it brings out the best in you. Right. I put out a casting call once. Someone reached out to me on Instagram, said, Hey, I saw your casting call. I'm a big fan of your work, but I just don't see myself as a certain kind of character. And just keep me in mind for future things. It's yeah. like I keep you in mind for future things if if you try it out for this role, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's too bad. Um, I would have turned down everything, but my dad was always there saying, "Don't you dare turn that down." You know, you know. I I just kind of learned that I had to be that way, and so I I I did. And I'm so happy I did because I was I had a very round, you know, very rounded experience of a lot of different types of roles when it comes to your writing what kind of roles would you love to play anything that's funny i like to make people laugh but i also like to you know do drama i've done both on both levels you know mm -hmm. uh but i do enjoy making an audience laugh that is uh my, my favorite oh, go may, may i interject uh i think Jimmy, I would like to think that Jimmy and I are kind of similar in the sense that like my favorite tone for stuff to act in, and it always depends. You always want to do stuff that's probably different than what you did the last time, you know, like character actor, it's fun to just change it up. And then stuff like White Lotus that's out right now, that is like a heavy dramatic thing, like talking about like pretty, pretty serious subjects in life, you know, like the dad gets cancer in the first season and yet the kids are like making fun of them and you know making fun of like class warfare and and death and a lot of these things and stuff and uh so that my point is is that there's a lot of comedy and they really play it up abroad in this dramatic kind of heavy yeah. i think that's kind of the most sophisticated stuff and interesting truly to play and if you find in movies like amadeus goodfellas martin scorsese said i just heard this the other day was almost a dark comedy basically a dark comedy i think those are kind of the coolest stories now jimmy yeah. did also he star in saw in the saw three through five or whatever jacob's a big horror guy Unreal. but uh, yeah, yeah is there anything in particular i still and jacob oh. obviously saw your movie seven days to vegas that i was on set when you guys made and you know it's amazing that you guys made something that had such glamorous roles for you guys and is considered like one of the best you know game movies of its genre well, we, 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 yeah, I, I, so we're so proud of that film. We, uh, you know, we put everything we had into it. We spent nine months in editing. We went back and made sure we had all the shots we needed. We, you know, we, we just basically made the movie we wanted to make. And that's the first time in my life I could ever say that. We really made something that we felt <laughs> that really, we did it. We did it. We pulled it off. And that's, I mean, I've never been able to say that. We've, yeah. Well, this film, I, I tell, this is the film characters. I tell people to watch. I say, hey, watch my, meet people, go, watch my movie, Seven Days yeah. of Age. And they watch it and they go, oh my God, everyone likes it. Everyone loves the movie. It's because it has a beginning and a middle and an end and it's twists and turns you don't see coming. Yeah. We did what we wanted to do on that one. But let me just say something about acting. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're talking about the roles that, you know, that you don't want to play and all that. Yeah. The roles that, are, that, you really, that I don't really like to play are leading characters. When you're the lead uh, in, a, uh, you know, the straight guy, you know, yeah. uh, that's a hard part to play. Uh, everyone else comes off shining because everyone else is, has a character. It's very, first of all, the easiest thing, they always give people like Academy Awards for being crazy and all that. There's yeah. nothing easier than being crazy. There's nothing easier than being, <laughs> right. being a mean gangster or a crazy, angry guy. Being angry is so easy. It the is. Hard for some the hard, the yeah. hardest part. Uh, is to find a leading actor that actually makes it make the leading part interesting because they're always the toughest roles. I'm just, it looks like the easy role, but it's not. It's mm -hmm. not. The easy roles are all the characters around him. That's well, easy. then, and it's always Sunny and Phil. The, the lead character has to really, how's he going to make this, this character? 
how does he show that he's a real person? How does he show he's, he's, he's a, how does he make it interesting? You know? Yeah. So I'm just saying, those are the ones you go, oh, shit, I don't know if I want that. That's a tough one, you know? <laughs> well, you know like I mean? in table reads, for example, the table reads that I've been in a lot on dramas, it's always the main lead that's like, strangely, I'm not usually like the heartthrob or anything in the dramas, the, the lead. And those are always the guys that are like playing it kind of stiff, especially at a table read when they don't know the part that way. They well. always they, come off stiff. It's, it's always very hard, hard to be a leading. Uh, and I'm always there just like. Robert Retro was a leading actor. He, was, he, had, he knew how to do it. There's certain actors that can do it. It's not easy. Being Whatever the handsome guy, the handsome lead actor is not easy. I'm telling you, this Matt, Matt, you Matt gotta Dane find always, something. You know what I mean? It's it's written, it's it's written, it's not never written that well. Matt Damon, Damon always, yeah, it, it is a deficiency it, in the writing, not yeah. to interrupt, but it is it, it's a deficiency there because as like from the writing perspective, every single character should have certain notes or a certain moment where you're like, oh, like there's something else going on there. Because then the actor can take that, latch onto it, and then just delve into that. But if it's like a straight laced part where they're just like, no, this is just like the hot guy or whatever, it's like, like how you even work with that. We can all play the hot guy in a movie. I played the hot guy in a movie once. Yeah. And I remember just cringing watching it, going, I didn't, I could have made that funny. I could have done something. I just came off so stiff. Everyone else is funny. There are all these great comedians around me. What did I, you know, I was so mad at myself because I said, I'm just playing it cool, you know? Yeah. And that it just don't never try to be cool unless you're being funny, being cool. Don't don't try to be cool. You're either cool or you're not, you know. And if you're yeah. gonna be cool, figure out how to make it really cool, you know. So yeah, that's how I look at it. Ryan Reynolds is pretty good now. Like he, I mean, now he's almost cringeworthy because he's, he's, because he's, the camera. He's but... so he's so good and he's so funny. Yeah. He yeah. has a sense of humor. He knows how to make a, a leading role. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd is always good. He needs to great. do that. You have to Paul have Rudd, that. Really. Paul Rudd is a boring, normal guy. He's great. He's also great when he plays a douchebag character, like an anchor man. <laughs> yeah. Or, or anything. He's always just, you know, they say 60% of the time it works every time. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> that guy, that guy is so good when he plays cocky. Vince Vaughn yeah, is he's, good he's, he's great. Cocky. He's great. He's great. Uh, you could go down the list. I mean, but there is a reason. Matthew McConaughey is always. Oh, yes. That's a good. That's you brought yeah. up a good one. Right. He's a Wolf. leading actor that just makes it interesting no matter what he does. Because by the way, he that's says. An actor. That's what an actor should be able to do, you know? Yeah, makes it interesting. Yes. Uh, and make he, it finds, interesting. he finds the reality of it. He's always thinking, well, what yes. would my character be doing in this situation? What would my character be doing? Yeah, but he's, doing? he's really, he's real. You believe him. He's, he's really believing that he's, he's thinking about the part, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's get into it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you look at him in Wolf of Wall Street as a, <laughs> and have one scene in the movie basically as this character and who's supposed to basically bring the main character into this life of drugs and debauchery. Yeah. And so he's like, what a fun, what a fun influential character in this story. And he just jumps off the ledge and comes up with every little fun knickknack. He was that, that was sheer comedy. He was that brilliant. Was- in the early 2000s, though, when he was stuck more in that rom-com type thing he was and good more of those, those like, stiff character roles, yes. it, you yes. know, he did the best with what he was given. But yes. talking about like Wolf of Wall Street, he really started to come into his own and That's really right. started breaking out when he had those extra colors to play yeah. with. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think he just he had just come off. Did, wasn't he very skinny in the Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, or, Dallas Buyers Club. He did, right? He just came off of that? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was like the same time. He went because out of his way. He, you know, he's, 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 just, he's just getting better and better as an actor. You know, he's learning. And yeah, he's... I read his book. I read his book. I read his you book did? For really? wow. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's like the most common coffee table book amongst young actors in the world right now. Green Lights. Green Lights. It's oh, good. He, oh, he yeah? I gotta read it. Yeah, of course you do. Hey, listen to the audio book. He narrates it. It's awesome. Okay, I'll drive to, I'll drive to Vegas. That's why I listen to audio. <laughs> no, just, you know, you're going to Vegas? You got you know, five hours? You just... It's the, best. it's the best um yeah. and then spice up with music in between but mcconaughey he never changed his approach to acting his approach from the very beginning was great without ever taking an acting class he knew oh, really? he knew on days and confused when he was brought out of uh film school at university of texas that oh. they were like they were scouting the campus for for young guys to look like they're kind of in high school or just out of high school the casting director saw him and he was a film school student and he said I'm just going to be, you know, that character, he's the guy that's a couple years out of high school, but he's still hanging out <laughs> with all the girls. That's like my brother. That's like my brother. And my brother's a cool guy. 
And so, uh, and right before the camera started rolling, he was thinking he was supposed to be in the car hanging out with some girls, like like watching the cl- the nightclub. And he's just thinking. Someone comes up to his car and he goes, he goes. He tries to think, what would my character be thinking right now? And and uh, and he thought to himself, he's like, this is pretty great. All <laughs> right, all right, all right. <laughs> and he latch he latched onto that line. That the one thought, about high school line, girls, they say the same age. And he yes. was like, that's the character. Well, and then That's the director crazy. shepherded that. Richard Linklater oh. shepherded that. We'll talk about a great, I think this is the right way to generally approach role playing, which is that always be thinking what your character is thinking. When in doubt, be thinking what your character is thinking or don't think, it, you know. But yeah. uh, but he, I mean, the director would ask McConaughey, he would say, hey, what is your character Wooderson? What, what would he be doing if he, I didn't write him into the scene, but what would he be doing if he was at the nightclub with all of them too? And then he was like, well, uh, you know, I think he'd be, I think he'd be hanging out in the back making jokes and everything. And then he was like, all right, we'll get in the scene and do that. And so it was kind of like, and he was doing that to all of them. And McConaughey said he just kept kind of doing that. He never took an acting class. He said he finally did 10 years later and he felt stiff from it. Awful. But then he finally, oh, really? got a, yeah, it didn't work for him, but oh. uh, maybe he just went to a bad teacher or whatever too. But that being said, his, his jump into serious movies was just because he, he wasn't, he was bored with the rom-com stuff. It probably wasn't as successful for, after a while. I think they weren't doing as well. And he thought he goes, all right, I gotta, I gotta last somehow. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, I think I'm gonna take a little break from all these scripts that are getting sent my way and I'm gonna wait till something good comes. All right, all right, all right. And then <laughs> two, he took a year off of, of filmmaking. And then next thing you know, he got, I think Dallas Buyers Club was like the first series script that he even got sent, or the Lincoln Lawyer was, or whatever. And he gets that, and he's like, okay, I'm going to do that. And then you'll notice after that, it was all great. But Wolf of Wall Street is really what put him over the edge. And it is for all those all those r- comedic actors, once they get a good, juicy, serious role where they get to show the colors, like you in the last movie, that's when yeah. they get the Academy Award and everything. But McConaughey yeah. said since then, sorry, last thing on it, that – since getting all that, and now he gets to work with any director, you know, from Darren Aronofsky to, you know, all these critically acclaimed auteurs, none of his movies have done well since. None of them, according to him. And they've done bad at the box office, et cetera, et cetera. So he's saying he's a, he's a mindful guy based off his book and everything. He, like, really thinks about living his best life. Like, he, you know, he says, if my, if my career, if I'm focusing too much on that and not my family or my other goals, then I'm going to tip over and implode. And <laughs> he's like, I got, I got to spend more time on like down, you know, man. community and stuff. It's, I'm not the only one. I'm Good imitation, one. my friend. Uh, it's a fun one. Uh, wow. Anyway. So we're, we're coming on time. I'm on the East Coast. Right. But um, last thing I want to ask you is, You've given us so you know all this great advice, consistency, staying ready. Um, my question for you is if you could go back in time and be right next to that 11 year old Jimmy, what is one piece of advice that you would give him that could best set him up for the career that was to come? Don't be nervous, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. It you're gonna walk in there, either get it, you don't. My dad had that. He was, uh, he'd go into an audition. He could, he could blow an audition, you know, do something terrible, be the wrong, he didn't study it or didn't, whatever, didn't know what he was supposed to yeah. be like, he did the wrong thing. He walked, he could care, as soon as he walked out of that door, he, he, his brain would just go right back to, oh, I got to play tennis as well, but didn't even think of, didn't care. So uh, I wish I would have uh, known that, uh, not to worry about all this, what people think of you. Don't worry. And, and, and don't think, you know, I think I was overly sensitive. I always thought, oh, they didn't like me, you know. You, that doesn't, you, that you should block that out, somehow figure out how to block that out because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All that matters is what you felt. If you felt like you did an okay reading, you bad, whatever, I'll be better yeah. next time. Yeah, that's, that would be my advice. Uh, I love to that. That's, that's fantastic. By the way, on that, I want to say one thing on that too. I've learned to not beat myself up because everyone feels like yes. other people don't like them. It's the most human thing there is. So once everyone. you realize that everyone feels that way, it's kind of a sham that you have to be confident all the time. You start realizing yeah. like, oh wait, I'm not gonna let not feeling good ruin my day or stop me from doing this or prevent me from doing stand-up comedy or something. So might as well just get on with your life or get on with your date or get on with your audition. Yes. 
You gotta put, you're gonna lose if you put yourself out there a lot. But yeah, because it's not about it's not about you. It's not about us. We're here to entertain or to change somebody's mind about something or, or change their day or just to, to, to perform for them. We're the performers. It's not about us, you know, and uh, we're out there to get the jobs that, we're, that, that we get hired for. And uh, that's what it's about. We're, 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 we shouldn't have egos. We should just be thinking, this is, this is what we want to do. We want to perform for people. We're not doing this to become famous or to get money and okay, that stuff comes with it. But uh, you really have to get your head straight as an actor. You have to be an actor. An actor has to think of itself as an actor. You're there to perform for them, for the people. That's what it's all I've about. Been, or I've been fortunate with my time auditioning, you know, the little that I have in person, it's all self-tapes now, or anytime I perform in general, I really come back to how can I do the best I've ever done with this? I'm literally thinking, how can I make this vision? And I don't get into like my thing of like this or that. I, which by the way, I don't think it's bad. Quentin Tarantino's book, he's just talking about how Steve McQueen, he acted like a movie star. And it's refreshing to hear he's the first person that did it where it actually worked. He's like, yeah. he was better than Paul Newman, who Newman reckoned himself to be a New York stage actor. And that actually went against it because he was yeah. so consumed with the part, which is great. But Steve McQueen, they would make the part around him and he knew his audience loved it. But that being said, I'm, I think if you can think, how can I bring this vision to life in the best possible way? Mm -hmm. Every time, whether it's but isn't one line anyone or... that's successful in any business, whether you're a chef or what, yeah. the ones that, that the ones that excel are the ones that think like that, that that want to do their best job ever. They're not just going to somebody's to a job every day and just you know doing the job, not not at their best, just getting through it so they can go home. They're you you uh, acting is just like anything else. If you want to be great at it, you you have to strive to be great. You know, a little better every day. You don't always feel that way. Sometimes you have to, it's just an admirable goal to go towards. You know, and don't beat yourself up if you can't do that because yeah. it's like life That's moves right. on. Great. That's right. Just yeah. knowing how actors are, this is some of the best advice, truly, that I've heard. Yeah. Oh, I hope people really great. take that in. It's awesome. Me too. Thanks. Thanks for for. For a pretty great guest. first guest, dude. <laughs> what? Oh, that, oh, the first guest. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing this like guys. You know, it's been like thirty weeks or something. Just me and Duke. Are um, you kidding? Yeah. We're oh, okay. Oh, cool. I didn't. Oh, no wonder Duke was like, "Hey, why can't you just?" Be on? I'm like, "Hey, I'll do it." <laughs> You're the first we're guest. Learning. I didn't realize I was actually the first guest. Oh, right. cool. Yes. Okay, great. I'm happy to be the first guest. <laughs> we're honored. Fantastic. Awesome. I appreciate it. Seriously. Thank you. We That's should we should do this all the time anyway. People would want to hear us all the time, but us three should just talk about this stuff anyway. And I mean, like off the camera. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I like it. I Call me anytime. <laughs> Here you Bye, guys. Thank you. I appreciate you, Jimmy. We'll put this out real soon. All right. You guys are awesome. All right. You have a good night. Keep it going. Okay. Take care. Bye.